Hey guys, welcome to Coding in Flow. So when I need to define an onclick behavior for a button in my tutorials, then I sometimes use this XML onclick attribute, and sometimes I set the onclick listener in Java code via this set onclick listener method. And I often get asked, what is the difference between these two approaches and why I use one over the other. So in this video, we will take a look at the difference between these two ways of defining an onclick behavior. We will see how uh, this onclick attribute actually works under the hood and which one you should use in your project. So as you might already know, there are two different ways we can set an onclick listener on the view in Android. Either over this onclick XML attribute, in which case we have to uh, define the method and the corresponding activity. Or we can set the onclick listener via this set onclick listener call in Java code, where we have to pass an onclick listener object. Now in this example, we use this anonymous inner class by just passing a new onclick listener. Other ways of handling this is, for example, implementing the onclick listener interface directly into the activity, in which case we have to override the onclick method directly in this activity, or we can define a member variable for the onclick listener or a normal inner class. But all of these approaches have the same effect. We call set onclick listener on a viewer, the button in this case, and pass an object that implements the onclick listener interface, which then has to override the onclick method where we define the actual click behavior. So first of all, in our example here, the onclick listener we set in Java code overrides the onclick listener we set in XML. This is because this onclick attribute actually does exactly the same. It calls that onclick listener in Java, but it does this earlier in the process. This happens while this set content view method is running. And the way this actually works under the hood is that our layout XML file gets passed into its corresponding Java objects by a class called layout inflator. So our button tag here in XML eventually gets turned into a button Java object. And when we call find view by idea and pass the ID of this button in XML, we just get a reference to this already created button object. And when our XML layouts get passed, it also reads out these attributes here and makes the corresponding changes on its Java object. And we can see how this works when we take a look into the constructor of the view class. View is the superclass of all components that we can put onto the screen. So buttons, image views, layouts, they all extend view. So when our button constructor runs, it also calls up to this view constructor. And this constructor also handles all the attributes that all views have in common. So when we go down here, we can see this switch statement in this for loop, which goes through all the attributes. And when we scroll down a bit, we can find this part here. This is where the onclick attribute in XML is handled. Because the onclick attribute can be set on all views, not only buttons. And here it first checks if this context is restricted, which is the case, for example, when we try to use the onclick attribute on a notification or an app widget where it doesn't work. And then it simply takes the name of the method we defined in this XML onclick attribute. So uh, do something in this case. And then it calls set onclick listener on itself. This is the same set onclick listener method we also call in Java code when we define an onclick listener. But here it passes this declared onclick listener, where it forwards the view itself and the name of the method. And this declared onclick listener is an inner class of the view class, which implements the onclick listener interface, just as we have to do it when we define our own onclick listener in Java code. Okay, but how does this end up actually calling our method? Because we don't own this declared onclick listener class. It belongs to the Android framework. So first of all, it does nothing until we actually click it. Because it's a normal onclick listener that waits for the onclick event to happen. But when we click this button, it calls this resolve method method, where it forwards the context of the viewer and the name of the method. And we can find this method down here. And here it tries to find this method on the context of this view. And it does this via a Java process called reflection. Reflection basically means that we can inspect a class at runtime. For example, we can take a class and look if we can find a particular method in there. And the class we are doing this on here is our activity, because activity is a subclass of context. If you want to learn more about what context actually means, I will put a video on that into the info card box in the top right corner. But ultimately, what this code here does is checking if the method we defined is in our activity. And here we have our first problem, because fragments, for example, are not context subclasses. So if we define the onclick attribute in the layout of a fragment, it does not look for this method in the fragment's Java code. It still looks in the fragment's activity. 
This means we would have to handle the onclick behavior in the activity if we decide to use this onclick attribute, which leads to a tight coupling between the fragment and the activity, which is generally not optimal. Now there are ways around this, for example by using the architecture components data binding library, where it is possible to trigger a method in the fragments java code directly from XML, but we only talk about the normal case in this video. But of course it's also possible that it can't find this method on our activity, in which case it will throw an exception, but this happens only after we click the button the first time. So this is another problem here. It's very possible that we uh, compile our code and everything works, and then we only get crashes when someone actually tries to use a button. It's better if we have this verification at compile time rather than runtime. It will also throw an exception if our method is not public, because this get method method can only find public methods by default, and this also means we have to expose our onclick behavior to the outside and cannot make it private, which again is not optimal. But if the method is actually there and it has the correct access modifier, then it calls invoke on this method, which basically triggers it. Again, it can throw runtime exceptions here if something went wrong while the method is executing. And it also forwards one variable to this method, which is the view itself, which is the button in most cases. And this is also the reason why our onclick method in Java has to take this one argument. We can't add any other arguments or remove this view, otherwise again we will get a runtime exception and our app will crash. But if everything went okay, it will actually execute this method, run whatever code we put in there, and then it also caches this method and the context, so the next time we click this button, it doesn't have to go through this whole reflection process. It will then just call this method directly. Okay, so there are already quite a few problems we have seen so far. We don't have compile time verification. The method has to take exactly one argument to view itself. It has to be public. And we have to declare it in the activity, even if it's a fragment layout. But there are more downsides of this onclick attribute. Generally, it's not good to mix layout and behavior which we are doing here, because when then someone takes a look at the Java code, it's not quite clear what our button actually does. There is no visible connection between our button and this method, which can be very confusing, especially in larger code bases. And we also set other listeners over Java code. For example, a text change listener on an edit text. There is no XML attribute for that. So it's better to keep it consistent and just set all listeners directly in Java code. And there are also some other tricky problems with this onclick attribute. For example, we have to define it on all layout variations. If we create a different main activity layout for landscape mode or for different screen resolutions, we have to watch out to put this onclick attribute in all of them. And also there is a tool called ProGuard, which optimizes our code before we create an actual release APK. And this ProGuard tool removes unused methods. And if we don't configure it properly, it can happen that it can't draw the connection between this onclick attribute and the Java method and just remove it. And this again will lead to unexpected runtime crashes, which can be very tricky to fix. The only real benefit of this onclick attribute is that it's very concise, because we don't have to go through this process here, and it's quick to set up. So the bottom line is, use the XML onclick attribute only if your app is very simple or if you quickly want to test something. But otherwise, the general consensus is to set the onclick listener in Java code. Okay, so I hope this could clarify this question a bit. If this video was helpful, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe for more intro tutorials. Take care.